A while back I did a video about transplanting zucchinis into your garden and in that video I featured some zucchinis that were way too far along inside solo cups which would mean they should have problems transplanting. Well we didn't have problems transplanting. The plants grew really big, really fast, had pretty decent harvest so far this year but we have been plagued with some issues with the cucumber beetles and squash bugs. I believe that them digging their proboscis into my zucchinis is spreading a fungal disease which they're known to spread. So I gotta clean up some of those plants. I've already lost one cucumber to it. I have another zucchini we're gonna be pulling out in a little bit. <clears throat> and then I have portions of some of my zucchini plants that need to be taken off the plant. So we're gonna look at some mid-season pruning techniques to help out if you're having problems like this. And most of these issues I've had could be solved just by starting your zucchini seeds right in the ground like you should. But we have to make do with what we got, so let's take a look at how we can fix some of these issues. And I'm also gonna show you how I'm planning ahead because we can get another round of zucchinis. Let's take a look here. I have seen a lot of chatter online about wilting leaves, yellowing leaves, powdery mildew, all that great stuff, squash bind borer. Besides a little bit of stunting from the late transplant and the early seed starting, my only issue has really been funguses spread by the pests. But let's take a look and see if there's anything going on in my zucchinis that we're gonna take care of that you might be able to do to your zucchinis and see if it'll solve your problems. Let's start out with this guy here. This is a very big healthy zucchini plant has had no wilting. It's been fantastic. I just harvested a massive zucchini off this one, similar to the size of this guy. A little bit bigger actually off of that plant. Left it on there for a couple weeks, maybe not enough time for seed harvesting to be perfect, but I have the seeds out of that zucchini fermenting. So what I'm doing is I'm saving these seeds off my biggest, healthiest plant that produced the biggest, healthiest zucchini fruit. And next year, those seeds are going to fill my zucchini patch. And we're gonna take seeds from those big, healthy plants and keep the process going and see if we can create a very healthy strain of zucchini. Because when you buy seeds from the store, let's be honest, there's a lot of inconsistency with those seeds. Some of them don't get very big, some don't germinate. So if we can take our best, biggest plants, take the seeds from them, yeah. we're looking forward to next year. Moving on from the big, healthy, success story plant, let's take a look at something that has not been so great. Look at this guy, not doing too good. This was my prize zucchini to begin with. Grew the biggest, the fastest, yielded my first fruits on it, got a couple off of it, but now, I am ready to give up on it. These leaves were soft. They're firming up a little bit. I mean, it's so strong that it's really trying to make it. And it's got some new growth coming in. I'm gonna give this guy one more week. It hasn't spread anything bad to the plants next to it. If it doesn't bounce back by then, it is lights out for the zucchini. And if you have a situation like this where you have a plant that is not doing great and it's probably got a disease or some sort, get it out of the ground, rip it up by the roots, keep the soil here away from the other plants, don't touch your other plants after touching this plant, but like I said, we'll see what happens. These leaves were completely wilted and soft, the fruits are soft on it, but we'll see what happens. We got some newer growth coming in, we'll see if it can recover. Some Most people aren't going to show you that because they'd rather show you the success stories. But I think it's a good idea to be straightforward because it all happens to us. Every plant's not going to make it. That's a plant right there that's just not doing too hot. Moving on to this guy. This one doesn't look too hot. It's kind of folded over, but the leaves are still good. And it's got the giant zucchini sitting on it. So about 10 minutes ago, this plant looked like this. This side of the vine was not doing hot at all. So what I did was, you can see my stem comes out of the ground there. And this was one of the suckers coming off the stem. 
That sucker is doing pretty good. That's going to stay. I took a knife and chopped this whole section off that plant. So now we're going to focus all the energy into building this fruit a little bit more. Even though it doesn't need to be. That's a monster zucchini. And the energy is going to focus into this plant to keep this plant healthy. And then when you take stuff like this off, get it out of your garden. Don't put it in the compost. Could have some diseases in it. Gone. Lots of pictures about concerns about your leaves. I've been seeing on the internet. A lot of droopy ones like this. People are worried. It's nothing to really worry about right now, but it is something to watch because this could be a sign of some kind of fungus getting into your plant. If it gets worse and spreads to the other ones, get it out of your garden so it doesn't jump to your other plants, especially if you're doing compact growing with plants closer together. It's really easy for this stuff to jump. We're a little further apart, so I can deal with it now as long as the bugs don't carry it over, which they will been smashing them and killing them left and right and we've been putting a dent on the population checking the leaves for eggs making sure there's no eggs under there from these squash bugs but as far as the leaves what you're really looking for is something like this these ones are nice and green and healthy crisp we got a lot of new ones coming in down low this is a very healthy plant this one doesn't need much work and I did a little hand pollination and I got two zucchinis growing there. Might harvest those ones pretty quick and eat them while they're small instead of turning them into bread like a lot of the others. This is also a mound where I talked about supplemental seeding. When you had a plant like this one that was cracked in half when I planted it, we didn't know if it was going to make it. So I threw another seed in the mound. Well it grew this little guy and it's really not growing. A lot of the energy is going into this plant, which is what we're shooting for anyway. So this supplemental one, he's gone. And it was starting to show a little signs of some rot in the leaves too. So we don't, we don't need this little guy compromising our big one that's doing good. And it's probably going to give us a lot more fruits. So you get him out. This guy here doing pretty decent. Got a nice little zucchini growing on it. A little stunted because it was one of the solo cup transplants that spent too much time in the solo cup that we're making do. We got the aluminum foil around the base to protect from the vine borer, which I have not seen too many lately. I killed one and saw another one flying, but I have not lost any plants to vine borer. But this one had a part that was not looking hot. This guy was hanging off this plant just like that. So we had the root going up to this main plant and this sucker sticking off that wasn't doing good. So like the other plant, took a knife, chopped it off, and this guy is gone. Another stunted little guy with a weird shaped fruit on it. That's one we're not going to be saving the seeds from. We're just going to use this to get some zucchinis. So, you notice here, got a little white going on this leaf. That leaf's not doing too hot. That's a leaf we're going to get out of here and get it away from these zucchinis and squashes. Same thing with this one. Just breaking it off. This guy here too, don't like that. Break him off. Other than that, looking pretty good. We'll see what happens with this one, not expecting too much. Another little guy here, used to look like this, with this guy that wasn't doing too hot. Cut him off, and we're getting him out. We're gonna go through as well, and any of these little female flowers that didn't get pollinated, that are just rotting on a vine, we'll get them off because they're not helping us out at all. Pollination has been a huge problem here and I've been hand pollinating on the weekends because that's the only time I can come out in the morning to do it when the flowers are open. So that has been an issue because I'm missing out 
on a lot of flowers that I could be hand pollinating. But we're making do on it. And there have been a lot more pollinators coming in here since I left a strip of clover right on the outside of the garden fence and mowed most of the rest of it. So we got the unpollinated fruits off, got all the bad leaves off. We've cut off some of the suckers that didn't look too healthy. Plants are looking a little small, but now all that energy is going into these smaller plants. So we should have a continued growing season off of these. We've left our good plants alone. We're monitoring <coughs> our plants that are not doing so hot so we can yank them out of the ground. Last thing I'm going to do here is inspect for squash bugs and squash bug eggs. Kill as many of them as possible. So the squash bugs are going to lay their eggs underneath these big leaves. So you lift them up and you look. And let's see if we can find any. So here we go. Lifted up the leaf. You have this little cluster of eggs right there. You just take your finger and smash them up. Make sure you get them all. Try not to let any fall to the ground. You might have to use your fingernail to get in there to get some of these guys. But yeah, just crush those up so they don't hatch into more pests. Make sure you check all of them. We want to put a dent on the population of these terrible creatures that are spreading disease to our plants. And it really does not get talked about enough, the problems that the cucumber beetles and squash bugs cause. It's not just they're eating your plants and sucking energy out, it's the fact that they're spreading disease to your plants when they do it. That's the worst part. That'll take out your whole plant. Feeding it is not gonna hurt the plant as much. But when you get those bacteria and fungi into your plants, it's pretty much lights out. So do what you can to make sure you kill as many as possible. Use chemicals if that's your thing. It's not mine. I've been manually picking them off as I see them and just killing the eggs. And it's done pretty good, but they're still here. Speaking of which, look at that guy. Come here. There he is. The old squash bug. I think the only plant the squash bugs are not messing with is the actual squash itself. Look at this guy. This was a volunteer in my garden by the tomatoes. And this thing is just beautiful. It's perfect. It's no leaves chewed up. Bright green. It's got that nice squash forming. We hand pollinated another one over here. It's coming in. I believe I will be saving seeds off this guy because I'm really happy with how this one turned out. And no issues with the pumpkins either. A little, a little spotting on the leaves there from getting eaten probably by Japanese beetles which are eating everything in my garden. Got a new guy coming up, I planted it. Oh, look at you. Look at you. Gotta watch out for that guy. Maybe we do have problems. We'll keep an eye on it. And the last thing I've done for this early July setting of garden maintenance in my squash area is I have added several more mounds here that have zucchinis, squashes, I put some more cucumbers in over there. These grow really fast, so we should get a harvest out of these before the first frost. This is just a great idea anyway if you have the space because as your other plants start to slow down you're gonna have new plants coming in. This works with pretty much anything you're planting. If you stagger your planting you don't have to harvest everything all at once and put it in the freezer or preserve it. Everything tastes better fresh hand-picked right out of the garden. So I'm doing this with my zucchinis and squashes so I can have a continued harvest throughout the season. Oh, and one more thing before we go. I've seen talk about 
watering and underwatering and overwatering. Don't give your zucchinis too much water. I know people say they need a lot of water, but a couple days ago this zucchini was overwatered and when they're overwatered, they get heavy leaves that start drooping down. I just took some of this mulch away from here and dug down a little bit, let it dry out, cut it out of the watering schedule, and it solved the issue. If you get too bad with it, your roots are going to grow mold, your plant's going to rot, and that will be lights out. The finger test is always good to see what your moisture levels are at. You stick your finger down. I like to go as far as I can go down there because these roots go pretty far down. And if it feels moist, you're good to go. If it's dry all the way down, you're going to give this plant water. And don't go too close to the plant because if you wanted to, you could dig up about a foot or so away from the plant and you'll notice these roots. So these are coming out of these zucchinis. These will suck up the water and then you don't have to worry about this moisture evaporating into your plants and causing any fungus on your leaves. Because just like the airflow to keep these dry, we want to keep this area so it's not too moist and stays dry. I never realized how popular zucchinis were till looking online and seeing all the talk about them. So I'm sure I will be doing updates as my second crop comes in and I manage these existing plants. I'm also going to do some videos on my selective breeding of these zucchinis, which is going to take a couple years to do. I might be able to, next year, take some of the seeds and get a second run from my best plants, which will speed up my process of creating the perfect zucchini from these store-bought seeds. Until then, thanks for watching.